Look, I mean, in this country, you can't really mm-hmm. afford mm-hmm. to reject mm-hmm. Rome because of the financial implications, sort of economic yeah. You know, yeah. implications. Sure. You know, so, but the times when I've said no is when I realized that we're starting off on a very wrong uh, uh, note here. Actors don't like interviews. <laughs> <laughs> Who told you that? <laughs> so I'll, try, I'll try my best to make it a conversation. <laughs> okay. Rather than an interview. Uh, uh, so on Engineer Your Life, we, we've been trying to get you. I know OET has been trying and there's been mishaps somewhere here and there in communication. But what we stand for here is, is a conversation about the journey. What, what okay. makes you who you are, what you stand for. Um, the mistakes along the way, so that the person who's watching or listening mm. can have a takeaway. I always say that a person could be living a different life than you, a completely different life. Mm. But because we're all linked as humanity, especially as Africans, um, there's a common thread that binds us all together. Mm. There'll be that three minutes that you'll take away and you can implement in your own life. So th- that's the type of conversation we'll have. I promise you that. How's that? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> And let me go straight into it. Why did you quit okay. Christianity, Will? Well, is, is quitting quit? the right word? I don't know. Okay. English is not my, you know, yeah. uh, but I did leave it. Okay. <laughs> um, I think it was just a lot of things that I could point fingers at. Yeah. A lot of questions that, you know, I didn't have answers to. And a lot of things that I saw uh particularly about black people mm-hmm. uh you know uh we 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 are the most that i think kind of worship the best mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know we've mm-hmm. we've got uh so many levels of worship yeah you yeah, know yeah. uh that there's a whole industry that we mm-hmm. dominate you know uh with uh, worship and i think though we are the most suffering mm. Doesn't match this worship that we do so much. Match, you know, uh, it doesn't. It it kind of seems like a one sided um, sort of relationship. We are not getting any. We're not catching a break. Mm-hmm. You know, um, so I think there's this deep seated hate, self hate. Huh. I guess you know a lot of it is our own doing. You know, but. It's just a lot of things are not adding up, you know. Um, and um, yeah, so I just felt like, you know, let me, let me, as an African, mm-hmm. you know, even before, you know, the, the missionaries and everybody, you know, came into the continent, what were we doing? Mm-hmm. You know, that's, a, that's, I feel like it's a fair question. Mm-hmm. What were we doing when, you know, before the, you know, the... the Colonizers, missionaries. Missionaries yeah. came in, yeah. you know what I mean? Spreading the the the, the religion, you know. Um, yeah. Would you say, or rather, is, is it fair though, because somebody there who's a strong believer in yes. Christianity is asking themselves, but Christianity for me brings peace, brings solace. Why is Vuyo saying that it's, causing us to suffer more? I, look, I mean, I, I'm not saying it's causing us to suffer more. I think, you know, we're not necessarily really getting any reciprocation okay. in terms of we pray when we worship, but we the blessings are, are not coming with, uh, you know, the prayer. It's usually individuals. You'll find, I mean, I was in a church, mm-hmm. you know, one day I, I had an epiphany. I was in kind of almost in the middle of that hall. And then I looked at, you know, people were grouped together. And I saw the successful people grouped together. Huh. And then I thought, 
hold on, I know these people and I know their strengths. You know, it makes sense. And then I turned and I saw the other group, the other group, you know, the, the, the middle class, the successful ones, and then the guys who can't even afford, you know, taxi fare. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, you know, uh, I'm, no disrespect, but, you know, I, I, I had spent a lot of time with these different groups and I had realized how different they are. And a, each, each group, you know, kind of um, benefited from their strengths. I don't know if you understand what I'm you saying. So the sense. guys that are not necessarily doing well, yeah, yeah, you know, they didn't have the 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 the, the go get go getter sort of energy. They yeah, didn't yeah, have yeah. Uh, the hard work behind them. They didn't have the faith behind them. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, these are people who always, you know, when you spend time with them, you speak to them. Uh, you you can tell that they think that life is supposed to be the way uh, mm. it is for them. Yeah, yeah. Others yeah. are you know doing so well, but you know the, the, whether they are Leos or what Scorpios or whatever it is, mm. they just have that natural ability to drag themselves through the hard learning, the hard work, and what have you. And you know, then uh, when you look at them, they are successful. So my point is, look, we all in the same under the same uh, 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 venue, uh-huh. you know. We worship in the same God, uh-huh. but this other person does not necessarily have the strength. Why does this per- does this person not have the strengths that the other guy has? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And I'm not necessarily talking about laziness or anything uh-huh. like that, you know. Um, and a lot of them, it's per background Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know you're affected by your background where you come from and you know it's almost as if you are all alone you know why didn't god protect you from that environment that has broken you to a point where you are and you believe that life will always be this way i want to see if i understand you you're saying we've got different groups in church there's a, a wealthy section there's people who don't even afford to come here there's people who are middle class, they go to work, come back every day, live a very normal life. But these people who are broken, who are living in poverty, are still very committed at church. But why is God allowing them to remain in poverty, to remain broken? Yeah, but then my question is, why did God give the other guys Th- that's, the that's what I'm, Correct. That's what I'm why, are they, to, yeah. why are we separate under yeah. the same vein? Yeah, yeah. Why is there... Uh, semblance of fav- favoritism, huh. Huh. like it looks like huh. favoritism yeah, in that yeah, space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Hey, family, a quick one. Over 87% of you are consuming this content every single week but are not subscribed. That means you are enjoying the growth conversations, but you are not liking, you are not subscribing, and you are not sharing it with others. So please, I plead with you, please subscribe so that you can share the love, you can share the growth, and you can share this wonderful platform and wonderful safe space with others as well. Enjoy the episode. Pastors would say you're not working hard enough on your relationship you, with God. Yeah, and then you have to wait yeah. uh, for, for, for uh, divine intervention, mm-hmm. you know. Elsewhere, you know, you don't necessarily wait for divine intervention. You believe uh-huh. and you, 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 you know, you, you, um, you live your life knowing that things will change. Yeah. And you feel that way. And things do come together for you. And then the other person is waiting for divine intervention. Christianity is a religion. Yeah. Spirituality is connection with higher power. Yes. Difference, right? Yeah. yeah. Do you yeah. still believe in spirituality and which spirituality? Um, look, I mean, I, I, I definitely, I think we are more spirit than, you know, that we are physical. Mm-hmm. You know, I think this is just like a blip in time that we are experiencing. And I believe our souls uh, and our spirits are forever, you know. Uh, you can't destroy it. And, you know, people say that science, energy. We are all energy. That science. You can't um, create it. You can't destroy it. You know, so I think 
you know, what we've done is we have borrowed these bodies. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, so that would mean that um, a great deal of our lives has to address the spirit. Whew. Yeah. Rather than the physical. Yeah. How do I connect to that spirit man inside of me? Because once again, the people who are Christian think that is the vehicle to connecting to it. Mm. I think just, you know, if, if you can cut out the, the distractions, uh, the more and more you cut out the distractions, your, your, your cell phone, television, what's happening in the world, the news, um, uh, uh, the worry about, okay, uh, rent and bills and what have you. If you can just center yourself and kind of find a way to kind of, you know, just be still for me, then that's when you will connect to, to, uh, cause everything else I believe is actually cutting us off from I hear you. actually yeah, being centered, being centered and yeah. hearing, um, ourselves. Somebody was saying earlier on, we, we don't really know who we are. You know, somebody gives you a name <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's you. And then, you know, somebody says, go to church and mm -hmm. pray this prayer. Go and to you this do school. It. Go, go to this school. school. Yeah. So, oh, you know, in everything, all your life, you're being told what to do and who you are. And yet, you know, we, 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 you know, nobody gets to know exactly who this spirit, who you are. Uh, who are you? Who am I? I don't know. Do you know? Yeah. Is it based on what you've been told? My name is, you know, my name is, and this is what I do. Huh. That's the identity. Yeah, yeah, it have. morphed. Yeah, but it's within a context yeah. of, you know, um, it's within a context of what you've been, you know, what's been molded for you. You just got to fit into it. Sure. You know, so. Since we're there and speaking about being centered as a human being, how often or did you ever go through a period where because of fame um, you felt uncentered? Mm. And to what extent, how bad does it get that fame removes you from who you truly are? Um, you know, I think, you know, with, with, with the character Gaddafi, mm -hmm. um, look, I mean, first thing, I come from a very you know, uh, unassuming kind of background, Okay. you know. Um, I come from a background where, you know, I wasn't really into parties and going out. I wasn't famous that way. People didn't really know me. And I was very quiet and very shy. I didn't want to, you know, get into things. Um, it took very few people to listen to me, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but when I started doing Generations, it was incredible how even people that Jesus who have achieved a lot more than me mm -hmm. you know kind of gravitated towards you yeah it was the you know the student at the uh, you know ground floor who was serving everyone mm -hmm. you know they they, they, would, they would rush towards me and you know and you didn't want my attention mm -hmm. and then I would think okay um this is fine where I'm going upstairs, I'm just, it's going to be chilled. Yeah. Because it's like, you know, politicians, yeah. you know, these powerful people. Yeah. You, nobody's going to notice me. I sure. get there and everybody is. Once again. <laughs> one, once again. Yeah. You know, and uh, when you come from that level of, uh, you know. Humble beginnings. Humble beginnings. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah. When you come from like humble beginnings and then suddenly everybody wants to. Mm -hmm. You know, it kind of tricks your brain, it messes sure. with you a little bit. It gives you a sense of uh, power and mm -hmm. importance. It deals with like your ego and it's mm -hmm. like, okay, you know, I'm I'm here now, yeah. you know. Um, and th those those are not necessarily the principles that I... Uh, you were raised that, with. That, that, I ra that, that I was raised with. Yeah. And also that I, that I aspire, okay. you know, to keep mm -hmm. and to mm -hmm. grow in. You know, um, when you start feeling important, more important than, you know, the next person, um, or you, 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 you expect certain treatment 
because it's know, because it's Gaddafi. <laughs> that's a weird place to be in. Sure. You know, that's a very weird place to be in. And I've seen some powerful people look down on people who are waiters and whatnot mm-hmm. and with disdain, and th- th- that doesn't sit well. I don't take it to that maximum, but I know that somewhere at the back of my mind, you know, I expect to be treated a little bit, you know, mm-hmm. and I don't want those thoughts, mm, you mm, know. Mm, mm. At the time, that's what I dealt with, mm. you know, um, because it was a huge cultural shock, you know, from humbling, you know, humble beginnings to it's literally the everybody. Yeah. Super fame. It's yeah. fame and it's super fame. There's numbers, numbers, numbers. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, crazy. Yeah. You know, the kind of people that are, that 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 I've come to meet, and you know, um, that have wanted to, you know, my audience and whatnot. It's just crazy. Mm, mm, mm. It's crazy. But you know, you grow older, and then you learn to, and then you go through a whole lot of things as well. You know, life teaches you. Um, uh, you get lessons from life. You know, everybody does. <laughs> uh, Big Star Johnson, the rapper, he sat yeah. on that chair. Um, after taking a hiatus for about three or four years in okay. the industry. And he said to me, there was a, a moment where he had won the, it was a show called Vuzu the Hustle. Okay. That's how he became big um, because it came with a recording deal, the PR team nice. and everything. And he said a year after, once the deal is off and the PR team is gone, you realize I had no friends. None of these people were here yeah. for me. Yeah. None of these people cared for me. It was the yeah. glitz and glam surrounding the fact that I was at my peak. Yeah. And he's like, the depression I slipped into after that was crazy. Mm. And while I was at my peak, I would fly to Durban, spend 20,000 rand on booze and clubbing mm. and come back the following day. Like, yeah. he was like, that's the norm. Do, do you think that's the norm that fame, that, that comes to many people when they're famous and they realize later, I would, no, man, that's not me. Yeah, I mean, when you're in a thick of things, yeah. you don't see, you know, you don't see um, where you're going wrong. You know, it's usually after the fact where you're like, okay, when you've learned something, mm. something's got to come and like, you know, what he was saying that, you know, um, that, that period where he was given the PR team mm. and the team around him and mm. the cameras and everything. Sure. The deal, uh, when it came to an end, that's when the lesson started beginning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's when the lessons, the lessons started beginning and then he's like, oh. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this is you know, and 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 it's what you do with it. You know, um, if you if you sink into a depression, and then you find weird coping mechanisms to deal with the depression and the disappointment, then that's like one way you know you can go. But if you've got like a bit of a support system, uh, your family, uh, somebody you feel, somebody you can talk to that you can. Um, open up to, then you know it's the beginning of like the right direction. For, sure, sure, you know what sure. I mean? Because in you know trying to cope with uh, alcohol and what have you, you lose a lot of things. Mm-hmm. You know, you lose you lose your money. You know, you lose a lot of things. Authentic it's relationships. It's your authentic relationships. Yes. Beautifully yeah. said. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, so it, I I think it's. You know, uh, there's a price to pay. pay. Huh. Whichever, whichever avenue you take or channel you take, there's a price to pay. How did you bounce back? Or are you still in the journey of <laughs> bouncing back from that period of your own life? <laughs> I think darkness in, you know, the period, ne? what it does, it's, it makes you dig into a dark space here, okay. right? And... The, the mind is the beginning of everything. So if the mind is dark, then you're going to call dark things towards mm-hmm. you, right? Uh, you're going to go towards dark things. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I learned that to deal with my mind, to put some light in my mind, for me, that's the beginning for me when I started, when things started opening up, uh, you know, the connections that I'm, you know, that I've made, the film, uh, none of that would have happened if I had stayed in the, in, 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 in the dark. Yeah, so yeah. I think, how did I bounce back? For me, I have bounced back. 
um, because my mind, there's a lot of light in, 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 in my mind, you know. Um, I honestly just believe and feel like um, uh, good things. I believe in good things. Mm -hmm. I believe in, yeah. I want to speak about the acting it's part of it. Very philosophical. <laughs> it's okay. If, if, if you hold on to it, right? You know, you'll you'll, you will understand. Yeah, you'll, you'll understand catch when, it. when it, yeah, yeah. I want to speak about the acting part of it. You know, um, Queen Sono, the, the big shows that you've done, the international shows. That yes. I think it was Avengers as well. Age of Ultron, um, yeah. You've been able to break those personal barriers and also barriers that society deems are big because different things are big to all of us. Mm. And you've been able to tap into those spaces. And in those spaces, uh, especially international, there is a lot of organized, it's be very organized, it's very proper, things are done to the T. Um, how do you navigate having to come back to South Africa after operating at that level? Because this industry, unfortunately, is very broken. Mm, mm, it is. Um... And those people take themselves serious, nah. you know. I remember um, just just as in a like a like a side note. Mm. I remember doing Invictus, mm -hmm. Clint Eastwood, and them. Um, I I didn't really have a big part there, mm -hmm. you know. I was just one of Mandela's bodyguards, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we followed Morgan Freeman, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know. Um, and, uh, I had a trailer for one. They flew me in the, uh, I think a week or two weeks before we started Jeez. shooting to discuss, um, wardrobe, yeah. you know, and, uh, because they want your input. Listen, they were, they, they were, <laughs> they were trying to get my input. Yeah. 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 Um, I wasn't as vocal as I am right now. <laughs> <laughs> so they must have thought, nah, you know, so, um, and then, you know, they 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 went me to they took me to the props masters, mm -hmm. gun, you know, smiths, and uh, conversations after conversations. You know, one of the guys was like, you know, um, this, you know, it's gotta be a watch that you, you know, it's you know which one, yeah, 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 yeah. right, you know, for this character, you know, and then I tapped into that. And then I looked, I felt it, and I grabbed the watch. I was like, this, this is like an, a wonderful experience. Yeah, I don't yeah. know if, if I'll ever experience this. <laughs> <laughs> Gave me, you know, gun, gun holster, everything hmm. in hmm. detail. And then they flew me back home mm -hmm. just in a day. When I got on set, I have a trailer. I walk in, the clothes set up. Actually, no, the first day I remember clearly, there were no clothes in the trailer. And I just, you know, I was led to the trailer, I sat there, nothing hectic, you know, nothing big. It's like, I don't know. Yeah, it's like one of those, like a banger. They yeah, call them bangers, yeah. you know, it's not like these houses that like Denzel Washington and them brings, <laughs> like it's like a whole village, right? And, you know, the guy walks into the trailer and he says, uh, hi, Mr. Dabula. And I'm like, oh my God. You know, it, it should be a normal thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. but you know, after like so many long years in you know in in, in, in the Africa, local yeah, industry, yeah. to get there was like okay. So all in all, they treated me like a collaborator, an artist with hmm. things, who has import, and like a human being, you know, who was like who's good at what they do, and this is why they were chosen to be here, and you know, everybody's excited. Clint Eastwood actually saw the tapes and he said, I want him, I want him, and I want him. Yeah, yeah, You know, so yeah. like everybody's excited because of the team that Clint Eastwood is, is, is built. Sure. And then immediately from shooting um, Invictus, I went to South Africa. I got a, a part in a series. I believe, uh, one, I got the scripts late. So I was learning on a run. <laughs> Uh, two, uh, we had like so many scenes in a day, regardless of how, you know, late the script came. So that we can push as much as so call as possible. As much as call as possible. <laughs> <laughs> and then it was winter season. I literally, third week into the shoot, 
I said, I said, okay, you over there, what, what are you wearing? Uh, they were all wearing warm stuff. You know, went through everybody. I said, so you feel cold, right? They said, yes. I said, okay, look at the space that you, you know, putting us. This is like supposed to be the green room where all the actors are. It was grime this thick. Huh. Um, there were no heaters. It was, it was, it was dusty. And uh, I said, why do you think that we're supposed to be here? Why, why, why is this good with you? Why are you comfortable with mm. us being here? You are cold. We are, you know, we are in your wardrobe, which is, you know, more than not, like, you know, not uh, warm. Mm -hmm. um, and only then, and I was not gentle, and only then the day, the next day, they had cleaned the space. They had heaters in there. They had... Uh... So I don't understand where the mind is here. Like, what are they thinking when they start shooting and doing, um, you know, working on... Uh... I'm, I'm intrigued. It's you... the weirdest thing. Yeah, I'm intrigued that you say that because you made the juxtaposition of there you were an, almost an extra. You were just a bodyguard, right? Yeah. Here you're in a lead role, and you have to complain about yeah. people making sure that you're not being called. The story cleanliness, is mm. you know, cleanliness. The basics. The basics. Yeah, you can't tell me it's money. A lot of people say, "Oh, it's money." Absolutely but not. I always bring out that story that it's it's attitude that mm -hmm. kind of needs to be looked at, and yeah, you, absolutely correct because. Mm. As you're building up your story, I'm thinking, okay, maybe there'll be a financial barrier here. None of that costs no, anything no, that no, will no. break the bag. I'm not saying, hey, bring me a trailer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I was with this wooden dam or bring me a trailer because I'm for your, you know what I mean? Mm. I'm not even, I'm not at that level. I, you know, those, not, those are not the principles that I live by, mm, mm, you know, mm. to boss people around and be um, uh, difficult and whatnot. I'm like, the basic, here are the basics. It's cold. And this place is dirty. A lot of people in your industry are often, unfortunately, in, in, in the public domain, social media, newspapers for their personal lives. Mm. You're not much out there in, because of your personal life. Things are, geez, almost zero things are said about you. How do you maintain that? And what is the intentionality behind that? Because definitely it, it's not quiet for just because by chance. Mm. There's, you're intentional about it being that way. I think intrinsically uh, intentional about it. It's like naturally, organically. Okay. You know, that's, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a recluse. I dream about a farm, you know, old, in a, living in a farmhouse, mm -hmm. you know, with my own goats and sheep and doing my thing. And when something happens, you know, um, the project comes, then I pop in. Mm -hmm. We do the projects, but I will always retreat. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Even more so because I'm older and, and my son is the same. He likes nature and what have you, you know. Um, it was a time he was sick and uh, I didn't have, um, I didn't have, uh, so he was sick. I gave him some meds and I said, no, let's go out. Let's go to a uh, park. Mm -hmm. He hadn't been there before. And uh, so, but he was a little bit sick. So he, we kept on having to stop. And we walked to the park because at the time I didn't really have petrol money. So I'm walking with him and I carry him and, you know, all is cool, you know. Um, and then... I've got like a bit of water bottle there. I keep giving him, but he's not okay. So we get to the to the park, and uh, we walk into the entrance. There's a waterfall. He sees it. He sees everything, and just like that, he was leading me. He was walking in front of me. Yes, yeah, yeah. He was good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He so connected to nature. He connected. Yeah. So I think we 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 were those people. We like me and him. Um, I don't really like, you know, I do party now and then I'll go to a party. I'll go, um, you know, hang out with the fellas. And, uh, at the height of my fame 
on generations, I partied a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, I was always, you know, in clubs. And sometimes I would leave, you know, from the club to work. <laughs> You know, club on Sundays. Yeah, you know, <laughs> club on Sundays is banging. Yes, you don't it's understand the best. why is it banging on Sundays? <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 you know, you you know, you come out and then people are driving back to work and then you you know, I'm you know going to generations. I'm gonna do like seven scenes, mm. but I don't care because you know I've prepared. Like I was one of those guys who was just petrified of actually getting on set and then looking at the script. Yeah. I can't do that. Yeah, yeah. Some people can do that, yeah. right? So I would, you know, give myself time to work on this, um, you know, on my scenes ahead and get prepared. And then on a Monday morning from, um, kind of what day, Kong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> from Kong. Hey, I, it's, it's I went hard. back there. <laughs> and I'm revealing my uh, <laughs> taboo, you know. Yeah, when yeah. Yeah. So I was, you know, there almost every weekend. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, Sundays would go to work. and I mean, Mondays mm. would go to work and what have you. Yeah. But, I mean, generally, naturally, I'm not that type of person. The industry comes with a lot of rejection as well. Yeah. Uh, silent rejection that people don't know about. Yeah. Um, firstly, how do you deal with the rejection back then versus how you deal with it now? And does a person like you still get rejected in the industry? Um, no one is, what's the word, in, indispensable? Ne? No one. Yeah. Um, I've seen, I mean, look at uh, that day. Uh, he passed away. He had a thing with uh, Kaspar. There was a thing. Yes, I remember. What's his, his name? Patrick. Patrick Shah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It wasn't that different. I mean, I, I, I stand to be corrected, but, you know, I don't think that they was doing anything at the time, hmm. you know. Uh, and in my opinion, and I just don't support Luca. <laughs> in my opinion, that man was very powerful. Yeah. Yeah. We saw him seldom in, in, in our screens. Why? You know, if it can happen to him. <laughs> I hear what you're saying. You know, uh, so, but rejection is something else. I mean, younger, I took it personally, obviously. You know, which is what's, how do I, you know, so what is, what's wrong with the way I look? Mm. Um, you know, my performance, whatever. And then you get to realize that it is not personal. Well, <laughs> most of the time. You hey, sometimes. It's, it's sometimes it's not really personal. Sometimes it's not personal. Yeah. Um, it's just not, things are not aligning, mm -hmm. you know. But also, whether it's personal or things are not aligning, for me, it's like it's destiny. Mm. Set aside, mm. set aside. Mm -hmm. Get out of my way, get out of my way, I'm going this direction, you know what I mean? Um, but, you know, after being so at the pinnacle of things and fame and, you know, being Gaddafi and Fuyota Bula, um, I found it quite weird, like, okay, you're rejecting me? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, so it, it, it gets a bit, you know... Uh, for a second, though, you know, for a second, though, because um, I understand these, this this need to be celebrated as, you know, a thing on its own, yeah, you yeah, know, that yeah. comes from a space. That, sure, sure. Hey, I didn't even ask for that space. You know, I knew when I wanted to act what I wanted to do and the places I wanted to go to and what have you. So... You know, I was kind of kidnapped by this whole thing. And then now my mind is a bit warped because of, like, the world that it brought. Yeah, and the yeah. energy and the yeah. people. I, I can't do that, you know. I can't think of myself. I can't slight myself. Mm -hmm. I can't let it uh, make me feel small uh, when I get rejected because of the things that I've done. Like, who, who the hell do you think you are? rejecting me <laughs> I don't know if that no, makes sense it yeah. definitely makes sense mm, um, mm. I mean does does Vuyo Dabula still audition uh, sometimes I do 
Okay. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I do. I mean, if it's people that kind of, you know, if if it's people that um maybe outside the country. Mm, okay. I mean, fair. It's fair. fair yeah. You know, but sometimes I, you know, I've been in situations where I feel like, you know, he, I'm actually wasting my time mm-hmm. because you know I've already given you so much, and you're still, you know, trying to. Like, you know what I can do. Yeah, you know what I can do. So yeah. I feel like, now nah, here, we're starting off on a wrong note. Mm-hmm. So if somebody says, hey, I need you to do this, then I know we're starting on a very good note. So sure, sure. I can give them, mm. um, you know, I can I can give them my life. Are you at a point where you reject roles? Um, at a point where I reject roles... Look, I mean, in this country, you can't really mm-hmm. afford mm-hmm. to reject mm-hmm. roles, you know, um, because of the financial implications, sort of yeah. economic you yeah. know, implications. Sure. You know, so, um, but the times when I've said no is when I realized that we're starting off on a very I wrong uh, a, a note here. I think sometimes, you know, yes, be humble, but the, 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 the numbers and the work is there. So I find it very strange sometimes when a person plays the game, mm-hmm. I want to come and come see, see me, you know. Um, I don't know. I stand to be corrected. Maybe there's something good there. You know, we're trying to see how we work together, but... I've never had issues working with anyone. Or yeah. The, yeah. <laughs> You're leaving us hanging here. What do you mean? What does come and see me mean? Come see me means, um, you know, let's do something with the director. Okay. The, the, the director wants to see you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know if that makes sense. Okay. So there's the, there's the audition. The director test. I usually... No, no. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 um, I'm lost in translation. Some of the terms I don't really pay attention mm. to. Yeah. Uh, so screen test could literally be what I'm about to explain. So the director comes uh, most of the time only for callbacks, right? So if a director says, if they say callback, then the director's there. But there's a point where, you know, the director from off the bat says, come and see me, but we're going to play with these scenes. Sure, blah, blah. sure. Um, I stand to be corrected, I, but I think it's a thing, man. I think we need to get to a point where appreciation and respect to certain people who have proved themselves it has to be given to those people. You know, I think it has to be a, uh, uh, we need to get to that point, you know. Um, people with a lot of experience who've done a lot, I feel like they should be treated differently. I, I agree. Kettle call, yeah. audition, here's this person and a bunch of other people who haven't really mm, mm. Uh, done much. In fact, you know, go to channel with the people's names already. Go like, to channel, yeah. yeah. The channel, you know, I, th- I believe you know, should have contracts outside of uh, these companies. Correct. And every time there's a role, you know, there's a... I think certain people should be held on a retainer, mm-hmm. in a mm-hmm. way, you know. I believe they are. It's just very low-key. Some piece of it low-key, yeah. yeah. It, it's just that I'm not involved in those. <laughs> <laughs> you know. There's someone we see on... Who's um, never not working. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who's a lead male. You're not Mason in the... Yes. <laughs> that person, if a role ends, a new one is coming so, up. You, you know, Even it, if it's a recast, it was a Absolutely. <laughs> you know? And that's a beautiful thing. I'm happy for the, you know, for those people. Yeah. Um, but I think, you know, it's just a sense of uh, sort of appreciation of uh, the different spaces in the in the industry, the different levels and what have you. Certain people should be... Because they have given, also the biggest thing is people have, certain people have given so much to the industry. Mm. You know what I mean? I don't think they should be treated um, the way that they are, you know, they seem invisible, 
even though they have done so much, should be treated the same way. In fact, you are finding, oof, this is painful, but it happens. You're finding a TikToker with a certain following yeah. being the one who is scouted yeah. instead of an actor who's been so, in the industry for 15 years. So that's what, what's happening. Uh, that's what's happening. Uh, and uh, I've always supported everyone, though, mm-hmm. you know, uh, the guys who had numbers on Instagram or TikTok, they came and I'm working with them. Um, you know, I always, because uh, I don't know your destiny. I don't know who you are. I don't mm-hmm. know your God. I don't know nothing. Mm-hmm. I'm not about to stand in the way because sure. I've got experience. Yeah. The best thing I can do is share with you and make you feel un- make you feel comfortable yeah. around me make the experience comfortable and enjoyable, right? So I don't, there's no judgment for me because this person, this young person didn't do anything to me. Mm-hmm, they correct. didn't do anything. They did what um, their era gives them. We didn't have these things, right? Uh, if we had these things when we were younger, we could have been these people. I don't have formal training, I hear you. You understand what I'm saying? They don't have. Um, but I'm studious. I, 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 sure. I observe and I learn. And even when I'm performing with somebody with more experience, I, I, like I take things. Mm-hmm. I'm always, I'm a taker, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, so I know my back on who I am. And I'm not about to judge uh, this little one who is trying to do something with their lives. I'm trying to build. Now work with them. I think the problem rather is what you mentioned, that the experienced actor who's put in so much work, they're not scouted. Mm-hmm. They're not called. Mm-hmm. Hey, come sit at a table. We're working on this character. Let's do this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. Let's give you enough time to prepare. Let's give you enough money so you don't worry too much. Not saying give me half of the budget, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, but you enough. Know, enough so that I can, you know, do three months or four months without worry. Mm-hmm. You understand what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Not that, you know, after when the movie comes out, the money is Sorry already God. depleted. You understand <laughs> yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 Uh, so that I can debrief, so that I can debrief from the character and be ready for the next one. Sure. And that's good for business. Mm. And I'm happy. I'm performing. I'm putting in, in the work. The TikToker doesn't matter. They're here and everybody's happy. That's good for business. Experienced actors should also not stifle the young TikToker because they're also just trying. Yeah. They're also just building their life. Yeah. Same way you would have wanted to be mentored and helped and groomed. Well, what? Like, you know, that's that should be like the, a given. Yeah. That should be the way. Like, if you are here, you're trying to do something. Why am I stopping you? Mm. Especially most of the people that we work with are black people. Yeah. You know, they're our children, our little brothers, our children. You know? Why not give them you know, a bit of the experience yeah. that, that that go this way, go that way, uh, come down and say it this way? Piece of something that he got where he not... If if he did not come across me, then he wouldn't have got sure. in it at the time. Sure. You know. Are we moving any closer to fixing the ills of the industry in South Africa particularly? Or you feel like, oh, we're just going back. We're regressing. We are regressing. No. Nah, look, um, <laughs> I will tell you, you know, I got offered for, for a Netflix show. Uh, lower than I won't say which one because I didn't do it. Mm-hmm. Um, lower than what was a problem about 15, 20 years ago. Yeah, lower than it, not it, but lower than it, it was half of the amount. Yeah, from 15 years ago. Mind you, that amount was already an issue. It was an issue about 50. And then I said, no, better luck with the other guy. Please don't do this. Don't, don't. Yeah. Then hey? I walked away from it, yeah. Um, but I think I have worked. Honestly, I've worked with certain people recently 
where I feel like these people are excited about the they are ex excited about the storytelling, the filmmaking, um, from producer to director, writer, young people who see things differently. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I think young people, <laughs> they don't come from where we come from, my yeah. era, you know. They will pull their finger at you yeah. <laughs> and tell you where to get off. Yeah. Um, I'm not advocating disrespect to older people, but I'm just talking about an energy. Yeah, a boldness. A bo boldness about yeah. them, you know. And they really enjoy these things, that these different things that they are into, you know. Uh, and they really understand what they're getting themselves into, sure. what they want to do. And I get a sense that it's not about money first. Mm. You see, the problem with the industry is that we inherited it from the apartheid. Correct. Right? You guys are like the first generation. Yeah. Well, I'm not necessarily... You, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So what, ha what happened was... Uh, I'm interested to figure out what the white population, the community, acting community, what's their experience. Um, but with us, I think it's, you know, this whole energy stems from how our people were treated. Mm. And why would they have been treated differently from the rest of the population? Of course, they were looked down at. Of course, they were not treated with respect. Of course, they were not paid properly. Of course, so many, so many, so many, so many other things. So I think the industry, you know, just like the country, we just... Battling took reform. over. Yeah. We just yeah. took over and we pretended everything is but, okay. Please. But nothing is okay. Yeah, you yeah. know, we've suffered so much trauma throughout the years. You know, what do you do when you go through a traumatic mm -hmm. experience? You find ways to deal with it. Mm -hmm. We have never done it. Mm. And the, as, a, as a country, mm. we've pr we're pretending everything is fine. Yeah. But we will deal with the consequences. But I think the industry, what we're dealing with now, is the same ideals that... You know, the people, the, the industry captains at the time during apartheid um, kind of dealt with everybody else. You know, um, we, the actors back then, they were just pawns and, uh, you know, our culture and whatever was exploited by yeah. whoever it is. Yeah. But those people did not make the money. We knew the actors. We never knew the directors and the producers and whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We knew the actors. And to this day, we know them. We know what they're going through. You know, I was saying to somebody, you know, um, if I get a chance to be in a powerful position, I would always work with the, the legends. Mm. I would always call them. Let's do this. Yeah. Different yeah. characters. Yeah. Yeah, be a consultant always, in this. Be a consultant yeah. in this. Yeah. Act in this. Do yeah. this. I yeah. will always do that. Yeah, because these are the people that we saw when we were growing up. Mm -hmm. It made us want to do this. They made us want to do it. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So I was one of those people who wanted to do it. Mm. Mope, mm. That guy was so cool, man. I can't remember what his name is, but like his performances were so, so cool, not over the top. Yeah, like very. Yeah, yeah. you know. Um, and um, to see what they're going through now, it's like, it's, it's, it's insane. But it's just the translation from that period of apartheid mm. to here. It, it's taking us too long. It's taking us too long. So I think we need to kind of, I, I'm, I'm thinking young people are going to, you know, it'll take time for them to be in a position of power. I don't know how to put it. I don't know how we're going to speed it up. But I think my experience with young people now, um, young production houses, 
directors, producers, um, they're shedding that uh, mentality that we grew up under. Perhaps even the you know the producers now that are now that that, that are operating now they take it from <clears throat> the old regime, sure, the sure. how people used to deal with uh, actors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Even it's, the young black ones. You've learned it, like yeah. you know, it's it's like oh, and it's acceptable. Then the actors keep coming and going, and they're accepting the 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 way they are treated, and it's lucrative. When you know, for for one group of a certain group of people, if the other group is not being you know treated a certain way, I don't know if you understand. You cut yeah. costs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can cut you know you can cut costs with a lot of things. Mm. You know, and uh, if somebody's not questioning you, why would you bother giving them more? Yeah, <laughs> you've got to have five hundred k for the actors. And then you can cut it down to a hundred, and they're like, "Okay, cool." <laughs> you know, I hear you. What are you doing with the four? You know, yeah, what I'm saying it's yeah. like you know. So, and I could completely be mistaken, and uh, you know, be correct and to be corrected. But you know, human nature. Why would you? Why would you hold back? <laughs> why would you be if you could make a profit? If you can make more, yeah. When you're in the end of our conversation, um, I always like to ask my guests this, because it almost, in a minute, summarizes what they believe in, what they stand for. What's mm. the one thing in life that you know for sure that you're just absolutely certain of? <laughs> um. Absolutely certain, yeah, in life. One thing. I think love. I think love because there's just so much <laughs> happening in this world that's evil, that's dark, but still, you know, we're still here. Um, me, you know, I come from a like not so privileged background. I've seen so many women with very little, including my mother, with four kids, you know, raise us into men mm -hmm. and one woman. Um, I've seen how I look at my son and we spend time and I care for it, you know, I have to sacrifice certain things mm -hmm. for him. I'm mm -hmm. like, but it's not because of oh, others do this. Love it. This, this yeah. boy's yeah face, and I'm like, oh <laughs> man, you know, I um, my darkest moments that I'm like, oh, now I'm falling, man. This is too much. Yeah, yeah. And then I feel like no, but there's still something, you know. There's just still light. There's still. You can do this. You know, I look at myself, I'm like, no, but you deserve more. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? That's like when you say I deserve more, that's like love towards yourself. So, so self love. And then I, you know, stand up and I'm like, okay. Um, you know, I'm not at the end of the road. And that those words to myself, you deserve more, sort of pick me up and, and I, keep, I can keep going, you know. So where there's darkness all over, why are we still forging forward? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's because love. If it wasn't there, then, you know. And I've fallen on my face so many times of like, oh my God, this is not cool, whatever. <laughs> yeah. uh, but, you know, I can look at myself and feel things about myself and say... Ah, uh, you, you, you're a cool dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love because you. of love. I love you. And yeah. then, yeah, so I think everything comes back to love. Yeah. Mr. Weird Devil, thank you so much for your time. It's been a privilege. <laughs> <laughs> Took you on a journey everywhere, yeah, you, yeah. But, but it came back. Yeah. It came yeah, back full circle. Yeah. I, I thank you so much for your time. Nice. Um, the, as I said, this platform is about growth and learning mm. from each other. And I truly believe 
that people in our audience will get that from this. So thank you so much. Uh, and I appreciate the invite as well. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Introducing the epitome of luxury living, Galu Luxury Villas and Suites, your private sanctuary of opulence and elegance. Nestled amongst the lush, sun-kissed landscapes of Durban, KwaZulu-Natal, this Galu Luxury Villa is a paradise of tranquility, offering breathtaking panoramic views of the neighborhood. Step into a world of refined luxury where every detail has been meticulously crafted to create an atmosphere of sophistication and comfort. This villa is kept within a gated and secure property for your peace of mind. The Kalu Villa is available for both short-term and long-term stays, making it the ideal location for your next vacation or special event. This villa boasts spacious living areas and floor to ceiling windows that flood the interior with natural light, making you feel at one with the surrounding beauty paired with multiple terraces, an outdoor lounge and a dining area. Live the dream, make memories and indulge in the life you deserve. Contact us today to book your stay or to learn more about this exquisite property. Your oasis of opulence awaits.